Over the years of me making YouTube videos, I have had loads and loads of different comments. From oosh, to get your trim sorted, to loads of other things in between. But the main things that I get comments about is making coins and people struggling to make coins. So in this video, I've decided to do a video talking about five different mistakes that every FIFA trader makes in an attempt to sort of help you make some coins in FIFA 21. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Currently in FIFA 21, I am fully invested in a load of different inform cards, so I can't really do any trading videos at the minute because I am doing my trade to 1 million coin series. So whilst we wait for these to... Chan, hello. So whilst we wait for these to sell on, this is going to be today's video. Like I said, Les, I am taking a week away from YouTube, so this is pre-recorded, so hopefully you do enjoy this video. If you do, like target on this is going to be over 5 hundred likes if we smash that target and maybe do something similar to this in the future like a list type video let me know down in the comments section actually what kind of list video would you want to see this video is brought to you by the stakester app if you've not heard of it before boys let me tell you about it really quick oh and a heads up i would like to thank stakester for once again sponsoring one of my videos if you haven't heard of stakester before though i'll just give you a quick recap imagine you're playing a mate right and you want to up the ante this is where stakester comes in the stakester app allows you to play your favorite games like fifa 21 against real people to win real money and prizes. You can set up a private game between you and a friend or just find a quick match on the app. A quick heads up though boys, as it involves real money, you do need to be over 18 in order to play. Firstly, you need to download the stakes to the app and log in. If you want to get started quickly, you just have to press find match. Or if you're playing against a friend, you can create your own private challenge and set your entry fee and then send the link to a friend. If you're thinking though boys, I really like the sound of this, but I've not really got any cash lying around for playing games, then don't worry boys, stakes have got you covered. Be one of the first to download the app using the code LE96Z and you can play your first game for free and if you win you get a prize with $5 that you can use to play more games on the app. So if you're the sort of person who always backs themselves on FIFA 21 make sure to download Stakester and start winning real money and prizes playing your favourite games. Without further ado though let's get into the video. So starting off with the first mistake that pretty much everyone makes in FIFA 21 and that is going to be talking about tax. Now if you didn't know, tax in FIFA is 5% of every sale that you make. So say for example, you buy a card at 2,000 coins, you sell it at 2,000 coins, you're going to be paying a tax of around 100 coins on that card. So one thing that I always see people doing is they'll start to try and trade with say higher budget stuff like icons and stuff like that and what actually happens is people go and trade with these cards and think that they're making an insane deal but as soon as you get to the higher budget sort of range as soon as you start trading with icons or whatever it may be the tax is a massive massive detriment to pretty much anything that you're doing so say for example i could go and pick up this ian right at 87,000 coins and think you know what i'm going to try and flip it on for 91,000 coins if i did that i'd actually be making a loss of around 500 coins there or thereabouts do not this also applies to low budget as well if you're ever going using any sniping filters and stuff like that i've talked about sniping filters before to be honest with you i'm not mega keen on them but if say if you went and used some sniping filters some Sometimes, say for example, you're sniping it, I don't know, like for example, with this filter right here, left back English, I've not used it before, so let's just use it now. Say for example, the selling price is 2,000 coins, a lot of people might go over here and just snipe at 1,900 to sell it at 2,000 coins. You're actually making no coins by doing that. So that's just one of the first mistakes. Oh, one there at 1.8. I mean, I'll sell that on at 2K, make 100 coins. Yes, get in the boys. Oh, have you met Entrepreneur? But either way, that's going to be the first mistake is tax. And it's going to be the shortest one as well because I feel like pretty much everyone knows about it by now. Moving into point number two, it is going to be thus. Using methods at the wrong time. Now, timing is absolutely everything with trading because it comes down to two things, supply and demand. If the demand's high and the supply's low, player prices go up and they're usually good to trade with. Now, if something doesn't have any demand, probably not worth trading with. And that sort of comes into the timing aspect of it. Now, everything that I try and teach you on this channel, I'll try and tell you exactly why I'm doing something rather than just showing you what it is and saying oh this works go off and do it but the main thing that pretty much always falls in my videos is supply and demand now I'm over on the league SBC tab at the minute now the reason for this is is because back in the day I've actually recommended for people to snipe silver prem players now recently I've had loads of comments saying oh this method doesn't work anymore and I sort of wanted to show you why it doesn't work anymore so you can sort of come up with your own methods based on the back of that so if we go over to the leagues tab at the minute you will be able to see that there is no Premier League tab in the leagues tab at this time now when you watch this video it might be back but I'm just using this as an example 
example. So, say for example, I wanted to trade with silver Premier League players at the minute. It's probably not really worth doing. The main reason why it's not worth doing is because there's no demand for those silver Prem players. Now, you could argue that with silver stars, maybe there is some demand there, but in comparison to what they were back in the day, it's relatively pointless. So, back in the day, you could go through and snipe just silver cards like this Gilmore, for example, and you could sell this Gilmore on for like 1.5k. Admittedly, at the minute, he's going for like a thousand coins, so I could realistically pick that one up at 700, sell it on at a thousand, but he's not going for the same price as he was a couple of weeks ago. Now, the reason why cards like that were going for something back in the day is because we had a league SBC around the Premier League, which usually meant that those player prices did actually go up ever so slightly. So, for example, to be fair, 350 coins, that is a deal because it's a massive undercut, but this method doesn't really work as well as it used to, mainly because of the fact that that league SBC is gone. For example, an Everton defender sitting on the market in centre-back, not really a thing to be honest, because when they've got a league SBC, players like this are usually going up upwards of 2,000 coins. What this trade will do is serve as a benchmark for future business. And especially at the minute with Team of the Season, a lot of people will be doing league SBCs to craft packs, and I do think that silver trading is still a very, very good option. I've just not done it for a while because obviously with the series, a lot of people didn't want to see silver trading, and that's fair enough. But if you go over to a different league, for example, and you go over to the La Liga Santander, you could actually get yourself probably much better deals because individual players who are potentially needed for a certain position from a club could be going for a hell of a lot. Like this Janika, for example, he could have been going for like 1.5k if there was enough demand for that pack for that SBC, but it's not really there, so he's not really going for much. Another big thing with timing as well is talking about going into 6 p.m. content. And I say this pretty much every time that I do anything with specials or anything high budget. If you are doing special trading or icon trading or whatever it may be, you need to be in and out before 6 p.m. So this is one of the main methods that I've been using recently, setting the filter up just like this and having a look around the 59th minute. Say, for example, right, that it was, I don't know, half past five and it was going into six o'clock. I could see a deal here and say, for example, this Nakate at 21. 1,000 coins. I could see this and be like, oh, well, it's actually an undercut there because his next one's 25,000 coins. Say, for example, though, that say 6 p.m. comes around and we got a French Bundesliga decent centre back with better pace than this Nakate, or say, for example, it was just someone who could directly replace that card. This player price will drop, and that's something about timing. You need to be in and out by 6 p.m. each day, and if you're trading after 6 p.m., you need to be in and out by 6 p.m. the next day, basically. Moving into point number three, and I think this is probably going to be one of the most important points that I'm going to make in this video and it's going to be using the wrong method for your budget. So say for example, right, you're on 100,000 coins. You might see 100,000 coins and think, right, what can I do with 100,000 coins? Well, icons are currently going for around 100,000 coins. I'll just go and snipe an icon. Now, realistically, if you've got 100,000 coins, you shouldn't really be thinking about trading with icons. Now, a good rule of thumb that you can use for this is this. Now, if you're on a lower budget, you should be trading with stuff like silver stuff, gold chem style stuff until around 300,000 coins. From 300,000 coins all the way up to around 1 million, 1.5 million, you should be trading with specials and then there upwards you should mainly be focusing on icons and that's just a nice little guide that you can use because say for example you've got 100,000 coins right and you go and pick yourself up a deal or what you think is a deal on the market say you come on the market and you go right hmm Guardiola there 76,000 coins what's his next one up his next one up's 82,000 I reckon I could get 85,000 out of that you could go and pick that up at 76,000 but then 76% of your budget is just gone in one trade where realistically if you've got say 100,000 coins you should be spreading your bets out over loads of different players and going like that because if you're on 100,000 coins you shouldn't be trading with icons you shouldn't be trading with specials you should be trading with stuff which is probably around 10% of your budget because then you can make 10 trades so say for example you've got 100,000 coins you could go to something like gold rare go over to the shadow again find the average minimum price I've talked about this method so many times before and have a look on the market what are they going for 1.8k and then there's a quote there at 1.8k his minimum price without the shadow on it is around 1.6 realistically you could probably get around 2,500 out of that card and then you go on to the next Next load of players and you trade like that and you try and basically manage your coin amount a tiny bit better than just spending it all on one trade because if that trade doesn't come off you're going to be out of pocket and it also means that whilst you're waiting for that trade to sell on you can't trade with anything else it also works the other way around as well say if you're on 500,000 coins realistically you shouldn't be going in and being like right what am I going to do with this well I'm going to go and do some ooh, ooh, I'm going to go and do some sniping I'm going to go to gold commons I'm going to go over to gold center backs and I'm going to go over to ooh, Ooh, I'll go over to Spanish and I'm going to go and snipe some Spanish gold common centre-backs with 500,000 coins in the bank. Do 
not. Because realistically, it just doesn't make any sense. It takes way too much time. You should basically be using that rule of five to 10% per trade there or thereabouts. But say for example, you see a sick trade and it's more than that amount, you should still go and get it if you're confident that that player can sell on. It's a really, really big thing that, and I think it's one thing that people really don't think about. It's managing your coin amount a lot better than just going doing a sniping filter or going doing a big icon trade because you've got the coins to do it. Trust me, you will save so many coins and you will make even more coins by sort of following that advice. Moving into point number four, it is gonna be this, not learning the methods. I'm not joking. So one thing which I see a lot of people commenting on a lot of my videos is I've got 50K, how do I turn it into 100K? Or how do I do this, how do I do that? And I'll tell them to go off and do something and they'll just go off and do it. And that, you know what, that's fair enough. If you wanna take that approach to trading, you just wanna be at surface level, that is absolutely fine. But I think it's a mistake if I'm being completely honest. So one method that I've used recently is the special method where you go to min price and you set it to nine and a half thousand coins, set the max price to around 15 and a half thousand coins, something like that. And then you set the min buy now to around 15, 750 or 16,000, whatever it is, and then go over to the shadow. Now, whilst you can do this at top level and basically just see any cards are on an undercut, you basically need to learn why this method works well. So say for example, you see this card at 72,000 coins, this Paulinho, you look up and you think hmm is that a good deal it looks like a good deal because it's an undercut I'm gonna pick it up but realistically with this method you need to be learning why the players are on say a down fluctuation or say for example you need to understand why that they're on the market in the first place because if you learn that you can take that to other methods it's free real estate so again, I've sort of talked about why the min price is like this, why the max price is like this, because once you learn that and once you get your head around that, you can then take this method into, say, I don't know, hunters or catalyst or whatever it may be. And you can use this method the exact same because you're transferring that knowledge that you've already got from one method and you just put it into a different method. So say, for example, I could come over here, see this Carrasco at an undercut of 30K. It's not an undercut and then I move on to the next one. But the fact that I know that that is that price, it sort of helps me make an informed decision on whether or not that's a deal. I think it is a really, really good point that though, you really do need to learn why something works because it will help you in the long run. Don't just think about that video at that time and what that person's telling you to do because realistically, the reason why someone's telling you to do that is probably explained in the video. And in addition to that as well, you can sort of come up with your own methods based on the back of it and you don't have to sort of rely on someone else telling you how to make coins. Don't ever play yourself. Don't ever play yourself. Don't ever play yourself. Don't ever play yourself. Congratulations, you played yourself. Moving into point number five, it is gonna be this. Panic selling and panic buying. You know who you are. We've, we've all been there, boys. You've gone and picked up an investment and you've invested so many coins and then you look at the price and it's gone down and you think, shit. Now, a lot of people would go and think, well, I'll go and sell all those on. I can't be bothered anymore. But should you do that? No. So, for example, at the minute, I've gone and invested in loads of Johnny Evans's at around 11,500 coins. I've put around 700,000 coins into all of these investments. Now, say, for example, the price comes down on this Evans. Will I go and sell? No. And say if this price comes down, will I go and buy? No. Either way, I've made my investment and I have paid as much as I am prepared to lose and I have made a decent enough investments to sort of cover all different avenues. And that's one thing which I think a lot of people don't keep in mind. With panic selling, say for example, before you knew what the new price was, were you happy paying that original price? So say for example, these Evans, if someone said to me before, right, he could potentially drop down to 11,000 coins and you're paying at 11,750, are you bothered? I would have said, no, I'm not really that bothered. Which sort of makes this investment the tiniest bit more safe because I'm confident in my investments. And to be honest, I think it is confidence which is the big thing which messes a lot of people up. People may think that they're making the wrong investments or they may be thinking that there could be someone else who they could invest in. But moving back into that previous point of learning the method and learning why some players go up and some players go go down, you can always make good informed decisions and that sort of helps with the panic buying as well. There's a method called rash investing, which basically when a new SBC comes out at six o'clock, you can go and basically invest in those requirements. And I tried to do it quite a bit. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I was panic buying because 
I thought I could jump on the back of this train. I've done it time and time again and lost loads of coins. And I think that's one big thing with panic selling and panic buying. You don't need to always follow the trend of what loads of other people are doing. You can sort of just go at your own pace. And honestly, boys, it really doesn't matter if you make 10,000 coins in a day, 100,000 or 1 million. As long as you're making coins and not buying FIFA points, it really, really does not matter too much. And I think that's a good place to end this video realistically, boys. Do not worry about all the trading stuff. As long as you're making consistent profit and you're happy and you're having a good time, it really doesn't matter too much. But let's hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please do drop a like on it. This has been five mistakes that every FIFA trader makes. If you want to see more stuff like this, drop a like on this video. Comment down below with the list that I can do next. Subscribe if you're new with notifications on. But this is 96, Lewis, and I am off. Goodbye.